In spite of assistance from the National Guard and the U.S. Coast Guard, it became apparent that lack of mobility and the danger to firefighters standing in swift running currents three to four feet deep would keep responders from getting ahead of the fires. Grand Forks then decided to attack the fires using wildland firefighting methods, airdrops from helicopters and planes. Their operation is they have a small aircraft way up high controlling the airspace and they have a helicopter down low helping spot where to put the retardant and then the, and then the uh, fixed wing aircraft, the tanker, comes in and, and drops the retardant. They actually had a second helicopter or a second tanker come in from Hibbing, Minnesota and was unable to drop his load because there were so many news helicopters in the air and we couldn't get clear airspace at that point. Along with the airdrops, one of the media helicopters covering the event had a thermal imaging camera on board. This became a key factor in directing the water drops, which led to quicker extinguishment of the downtown fires. We had a, a media helicopter, uh, WCCO, uh, had a helicopter in the, in the air. They offered to fly us to help just do an overflight. As we were doing the overflight, the, uh, they showed me a thermal imaging camera they had on board and it was kind of almost like an afterthought, oh gee, would you like to use this type thing? And I found that to be one of the most valuable tools that I had that day. Uh, by using that thermal imaging camera, I could pinpoint hot spots in particular buildings, and we at that point had labeled buildings, you know, A, B, C, and D, and the uh, pilot on the, on the helicopter could communicate with the large helicopter, so, the Erickson Crane Service helicopter then was able to drop the water where we wanted them to drop it and which buildings we wanted them to drop it on. 